Basic Tools of Witchcraft 101, Part B, Witchery Series. Hello friends, I'm Tia Grubb. I'm your horror writer by day and a practicing witch 24-7. I'm happy to be your guide through today's lesson of Basic Magical Tools, Part B, in the Witchery Series. If you have not seen Part A, please go and watch it now. Link is below. As with the last video, there will be audio along with text on the screen. Again, we will be discussing the basic tools of European neo-pagan practices as introduced by the Gardner traditions along with other first-wave neo-pagan traditions. We will discuss more on the history of modern witchcraft at a later date. If you have not watched the intro to the Witchery series, Energy Basic Episodes, the link is below. When I use the term energy, I mean will energy, focus, and intent. Let us begin with a condensed review of the nine things to know about craft tools. For the full version, please watch Part A. 1. Tools are not needed but are helpful to focus the power within. 2. Tools can be bought, gifted, or made as long as they have been ethically sourced. 3. If you find something in nature, ask for permission before taking, if possible, leave an offering. Four. Your tools can be made of almost any materials that conduct and flow energy and reflect you and your path. Plastic is not recommended and glass does not keep energy. 5. No tool is inherently good or bad. 6. All tools should be dedicated and only used for the ritual and craft. 7. Make your tools true to your intent and path. 8. Listen to your intuition when choosing or using a tool. 9. Never touch anyone else's tools without expressed permission. As you gather your tools and experiment and grow as a practitioner, you will find some work better than others with your personal energies. When we discuss spellcraft and ritual in a later video, I will show you how to consecrate, decorate, and empower your tools. Today we discuss what the tools are and common uses. Types of Basic Witchcraft Tools these are the most commonly used and easily recognized tools from beginner to elder. This is part B of the core 13. Cauldrons Element Fire Common Materials One of the most iconic tools of witchcraft, it is a large mouth pot, usually with a lid, and used traditionally for outdoor cooking or in fireplaces, usually made of iron or some other form of metal. Magic uses. Cauldrons represent hearth magic, magic of the home and self. It is a representation of the heart of magic or the heart of your home. Used for making brews and oils, also a safe place to burn spell crafts, such as a sacred letter and herbs, and a safe place to burn candles. I have a traditional cauldron for burning my sacred herbs and letters, but my most used cauldron is the pots I use to make my candles. You can even have a slow cooker to be your cauldron if you're a kitchen witch and your spellcraft is your meal to your family. Though each of these must be solely dedicated and used only for spellcraft, not for mundane purposes. Besom, besom, or broom. Pronounced differently depending on what region you are from. Element air. Materials traditionally made from a wood handle, staff, with tied branches at one end. You see examples of these when fall starts, everything from cinnamon to apple wood. The wood plant material choice will make all the difference in the power talents of the broom. They can be two different plants, just be aware how they interact with each other. Magic uses, cleansing, astral travel, physical travel, and ceremonies of home, such as traditional pagan weddings and so on. Examples, pertaining to the materials used in creation of the broom can affect the magic. If you use witch hazel, a medicinal plant used for cleansing, should be dedicated to cleansing magics, such home cleansings and removing negative energies. Apple is used for garden and love magic. As a besom or besom, it would be used for marriage and home blessings. Poplar is traditionally used for flying ointments and money attract spells, and this would be translated into your broom work. I have many simple brooms that I have collected and have been gifted. 
I tend to get simple brooms from mundane stores and decorate and empower them with my purposes of protection and warning. There is an old wives' tale that if a broom falls, it means company is coming. The direction and the way it falls reveals the unexpected guest's intent. I have brooms on my walls, and if one falls, it is a warning of trouble to come pertaining to my home. Remember, brooms and besoms or besoms are hearth and home related. They will not tell you of dangers and warnings outside of the home. Smudgers. Element air. Materials. Tools such as dedicated feathers, fans, brooms, and so on, used to circulate sacred smoke from natural materials that are burned to release negative energy or to charge a space, such as smoldering herbs, oils, incenses, and etc. Magic uses. Smudgers are not necessary. You can use your own breath. I find that using a smudger allows me to speak by chance and concentrate on my spell work. Only using my soul breath for very specific will pushes. You can also do passive smudging just by letting the sacred smoke move with the air current of the space. Examples. Feathers are very common, but you should be careful in how they are sourced. Different breeds of feathers make a difference. A turkey feather is very large and wide, perfect for everyday smudging, but if you're going to do shadow work, I would recommend a raven or crow, or any other bird known to travel between the veil. Peacock feathers are great for glamours and confident spell works, but there are also many options. You can use a small broom to smudge if you like, or a fan that you bought at a thrift store like I do. You can use your imagination, but just be aware of the intent and the materials that are being used in the process. Again, certain things do bring certain kind of energies and will behind your work. Mortar and Pestle, Element Earth. We and non-magical folk are like, use a mortar and pestle for grinding, crushing ingredients such as herbs, minerals, and etc. It can be made of wood, stone, metal, and more, and can even be a raw rock for deep root primal magic. Just be careful using porous materials such as wood or certain metals that can create poison with citrus interactions such as copper. Aesthetics aren't everything. Magical uses. This is a kitchen witch's best friend, but many practitioners use them to grind and crush materials as they charge them for their intent for their magical works, especially if you've moved on from store-bought products such as herb mixes and you are now making your own. Example, I have a few I dedicated to only certain magic works and magic paths, and one strictly for mundane use. Some materials being ground are fine for spellcraft, but can be poisonous if consumed accidentally with crossover contamination. It is not worth the risk. And that can relate to how porous your mortar and pestle can be. If it's made out of wood, it can hold oils from past uses. So please keep that in mind. Bells or chimes. Element air. Materials. Silver is the most popular and believed to be the most powerful, but can be made out of other materials depending on your personal practice and intention. Magical uses. The tones created are used to break up negative energy and or build energy. I will go into more details about sound magic and healing in the future vlog. Examples. I use my silver bell that I found at a thrift store for clearing areas that smudging is not an option. Either a person with asthma, or the fire won't light, or is just forbidden. Along with bells, people use wind chimes without realizing that they are using sound magic for protecting and cleansing energy into and around their home. Chimes can also be used as a warning or ward device, also with predicting energies coming your way. Singing bowls are also related to this category, but are a little bit more complicated and more skilled use. We will talk more about them at a later date. Keep in mind that some people are very sensitive to tone and have a very physical response, so be mindful of how others are affected. Certain high-pitched tones can actually hurt me and may cause headaches with others. In short, be mindful of others in the circle situation. This can go for any broad effect magical tools. Scrying, element, water, materials, varied. Magic uses. These tools are used to foretell the future, looking into the past, giving insight into the present, or commune with spiritual beings. A guiding and teaching tool for empaths and psychics, and with time you may not need the tools at all. Examples. 
Scrying tools come in many different forms and styles. Ouija boards, pendulums, runes, throwing bones, tarot cards, black mirrors, scrying bowls, and the list goes on. Each have specific rules and techniques, and some very real risks without guidance and ward protections that we will discuss in future vlogs. If you are looking for a safe beginning, I would recommend tarot and runes. They are removed enough from willful energies and help you focus on developing your skills. Tarot and runes use symbolism system with your will and sacred connection to the universe. Layouts may differ with decks and stones. Materials and decoration will vary. Pendulums use motion to answer simple yes or no questions and finding things and directions. Black mirrors, scrying bowls use concentration and meditation to see visions. Easier for those with an innate ability, usually folks who hated mirrors as children, but can be a learned skill. Even those with the innate ability, and I would dare say even more so, need advanced ward and protecting skills since they are naturally more open to it. They can be dangerous to mental and emotional health if done wrong. Best to know what you are doing with grounding and personal shielding before trying these. And again, we will discuss that at a later vlog. The Legend of Bloody Mary is a warning to those who scry. Fictions always have some truth. When calling through a mirror, it acts as a window and sometimes things can come through and come across, especially if your image is shared with whatever and whomever you are talking through the mirror to. Ouija boards use a direct connection with spiritual energies, can be extremely dangerous. Any work directly with spirit energy can invite dangerous and malevolent energies into you and your space without experience and correct wards. Be warned. You may think you are all powerful, but there is something always stronger and more dangerous than a mortal like you. Scrying is most practitioners first step because most of us that have been called to the path have a wild innate ability that these tools can teach us how to hone. Candles, element, fire. Materials can be made from traditional beeswax, very expensive, and paraffin, better on a witch's budget, or whatever material may do a slow and steady burn in the same means. Don't use false flavors and scents because it can translate into your magic for being hollow and fake. Magic uses. Most witches buy their plain and simple candles from your typical normal stores in appropriate colors and or specialty candles handmade by skilled witches. And with time and practice, you can make your own candles for your spellcrafts. You can carve your own runes and sigils into the plain candle and anointing it with an oil of your choice and cast simple spells. A white tea light candle lit every day with the intention and affirmation is a simple candle spell everyone can do. As you light the candle, think of your goal. Mine is typically to allow positivity into my life or I ask to be productive. Candle magic is one of my specialities and I look forward to releasing a future vlog on candle magic. This is the end of Basic Tools of Witchcraft Part B. Please take this time to write your thoughts and notes in your BOS. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future videos, please put them down below. I make videos about writing, travel, witchery, and anything else that might strike my fancy. Due to the current world circumstances, my schedule is a bit all over the place. So hit that bell and subscribe so you will not miss the next release. I'm hoping for every two weeks, but 2020 has proven that is easier said than done. Once a month has become the habit. Still curious? Find me on Instagram and Facebook at Tia M. Grubb. Find my pagan LGBTQ 18 plus horror novel, The Lesser Devil, the first book of the Keening Chronicles on Amazon in print, Kindle, and audiobook. Thank you for watching and blessed be.